Hello and welcome to a brand new series on the channel. Welcome to Sweet Left Foot Simulates. A series where we simulate different scenarios in the football world and see how they turn out. And in this video we are kicking this series off with seeing how Arsenal would do without their star player, their star striker, their captain, their talisman, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Now it's no secret, in recent years, Arsenal don't have a good track record in renewing players' contracts. Too many times they let them run down until there's a year left and they're backed into a corner where they have to sell them on the cheap or let them go for a free when their contract expires. And it's happened again. It has happened again, unbelievably, this time to their star striker, their main man, Aubameyang. There have been plenty of rumours that he's not going to renew his contracts, he might leave the club. So that's what we're going to have a look at. How would Arsenal do if they didn't have Aubameyang? Also, comment section, let me know what you think Arsenal should do with Aubameyang. Should they offer him a new contract? If so, how much money would you give him? Would you just write him a blank cheque and let him fill it out? Or would you sell him this summer, get some money for him and reinvest it in the club? Or would you try and keep him for another season and just let him go on a free? Let me know. I'm generally interested to see what people would do with him. Here we go then. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, what we've done is release him on a free transfer. Um, the teams interested in him are Guangzhou, Liverpool, Real Madrid and Man United. What we're going to do is jump ahead to the end of the first transfer window, see if Arsenal replaced him and then we'll play through to the end of the January transfer window and see how they're getting on as a club. OK, we're at September 1st and I generally don't know where Aubameyang has gone. There's nothing on the screen here that tells me where he's gone. We are going to find out together. He's in China. £165,000 a week. He's on a contract until the end of 2021, so another two and a half years roughly. Um, so far in the league, he's got seven goals in nine games, three assists and three Man of the Match awards. An average rating of 7.86, so he's not doing that bad. However, did Arsenal replace him? How did they get on in the transfer window? We shall have a look. OK, they, they didn't sign anyone. They didn't sign not a single soul to replace Aubameyang, so... I mean, yeah. OK, what we're going to do is quickly skip ahead until the end of the January transfer window, see if Arsenal have replaced him then, and then we'll move forward towards the end of the first season. It is February the 1st, 2020. We've skipped ahead. And as you can see here, Arsenal look like they have strengthened. Memphis Depay has sealed a move to the club. We will go and see if they have signed anybody else. OK, Arsenal have signed three players, three attacking players as well. Mohamed Darami, Franco Vazquez and Memphis Depay. Dadami, a young Danish striker, looks very good. You've got to think, though, with his current attributes and his current ability, probably one that Arsenal were looking forward to using in the future as opposed to right now as a replacement for Aubameyang. Franco Vazquez, the next man they got in, but again, can play the centre attack in mid-roll, not really a striker, so someone that is going to be more creative for the club as opposed to scoring goals for them. And finally, as we saw, Memphis Depay, how much did they sign him for? £53 million. Hasn't played a game yet, so I think it was fairly recent. But 53 million for Memphis Depay can play as a left winger in behind the striker or as the striker. So Arsenal definitely giving themselves more options and more goal threat coming forward. OK, so they're not doing too badly. Fifth in the Premier League, which is their sort of level at the moment. FA Cup, they're still involved. Europa League, they've gone through to the first knockout round. And the Carabao Cup, they're in the final against Man City. If you look down here, top goal scorer for Arsenal in the league, Lacazette. And he's also got the highest average rating, so he has slotted in to where Aubameyang left quite nicely. Lacazette, also the top goalscorer for Arsenal in the Europa League. And Eddie Nketiah chipping in with goals in the Carabao Cup, probably as the second choice striker, I'd imagine. So overall, Arsenal aren't doing too badly. What we're going to do, though, is skip ahead to the end of the season, see if they win anything, see if they can get the top four, and see how the new boys get on. OK, we are back. As you can see, I haven't looked at anything. It's the 18th of May, the season just finished. We're going to find out how Arsenal, as a club, got on. They finished fifth in the Premier League. If we have a look at the competitions page, we'll start with the Premier League. They finished fifth, five points off the top four, but a massive 10 points ahead of Chelsea in sixth, which is quite impressive. The top goal scorer for the season was Alex Lacazette with a 16. He also got the highest average rating for the club and was joint top in most assists. So he's really stepped up to the mark with Aubameyang leaving. In terms of cup competitions, the FA Cup knocked out by Spurs in the fifth round. I think that was at home as well, so that must have hurt a little bit. Uh, no striker in the top goal scorer, highest average rating there. The Europa League, they were knocked out in the semi-final by Inter Milan. But again, Lacazette, the top goal scorer and with the highest average rating for the club in that competition. And the Carabao Cup, they lost 
to Manchester City in the final, but Eddie Nketiah, the top goal scorer for the club in that competition. Alex Lacazette, then, the man that got the most goals for the club this season in Aubameyang's absence. 37 games in the league. He only missed one game. 16 goals, 6 assists and 7 man-of-the-match performances. An average rating of 7.39, which is, which is pretty good. In the Europa League, he scored 7 goals in 14 appearances. 3 man-of-the-match, average rating of 7.34. Again, very respectable. So overall, if you're looking for someone to replace your star striker, Lacazette, he's done okay, not amazing. A total of 26 goals in 60 appearances. It's, it's averaging roughly a goal every other game, which isn't too bad. But you do think if this club want to be pushing for top four and winning trophies again, they're going to want someone to be a little bit more productive. But yeah, season one is very much an Arsenal season, isn't it? Fifth, um, a couple of good cup runs, but nothing special. It's sort of where they are as a club at the moment. What we're going to do is skip ahead a whole season. We're going to go until this time next year, come back and have a look at what Arsenal did in the two transfer windows between now and then and how they get on in all of these competitions again. OK, we've jumped ahead to the 31st of May 2021. We've literally jumped ahead a whole year. I have no idea how Arsenal have gone. I also don't read my inbox by the looks of it. But let's find out together how Arsenal have done this season. You can see there they finished fourth in the Premier League. We'll start... With that, Arsenal finished fourth on 74 points. One point ahead of Man United in fifth, two ahead of Spurs in sixth. So they've just scraped into the top four. Again, if we have a look down here, Lacazette, the top goal scorer with a 17. Very similar to last season. There is a new man in the highest average rating though, Gabriel Barboza. So we know he has joined the club. I wonder how many goals he scored for them. But fourth position in the league, back in the Champions League, that is not bad at all. Only nine points off the top of the league as well which is quite surprising how that gap has closed. In terms of cup competitions, they came runners-up in the Europa League. Who was that against? The Zebra, they lost 2-0 in the final. The top goalscorer for that competition this season was Memphis Depay, so he's rewarding the club for investing in him last season. Again, though, the highest average rating in this competition, Gabriel Barbosa, just like the Premier League. And Arsenal's love affair with the FA Cup seems to have continued. They have won that competition beating Manchester United in extra time 2-1. Lacazette scoring both of their goals. So again, he's been important for them this season. Lacazette, the top scorer in that competition with six. He's fired them to another FA Cup victory. And in the Carabao Cup, the team were knocked out by Norwich in the fourth round. Depay, the top goal scorer there. But we can't really read into that too much because they didn't get very far. Overall, though, you've got to admit it's an improvement on last season. Top four in the Premier League, Europa League runners-up, FA Cup winners, Carabao Cup, I'm sure the club aren't too fussed about. Let's have a little look at the players they signed. We know one or two of the players they brought in. The first man that jumps off the page, we saw he had good average ratings for the club. Gabriel Barbosa signed for 21.5 million. And as you can see from his first season in the Premier League, his first season at the club, his goal return and his production have not been bad at all. Four goals in four in the Europa League, 10 in 16 in the Premier League, a total of 15 in 22 for the club. It looks like he's been sort of a bit part player, but again, very productive in his output. High average ratings as well, 7.57 in the Europa League, 7.59 in the Premier League. That is massive. I know he's only played 16 games, but still, that's very, very good. You've got to think the next man to jump off the page is Jack Grealish, signed for just under 50 million in the summer. Three goals and four assists in 12 games in the Europa League. He played 32 in the Premiership, scored four, assisted five. Four games in the FA Cup, scored two, assisted five. So he's been quite important in their run to success in the FA Cup. His average rating in the Premier League could have been a little bit better at 6.91, but overall, 7.05, he's not had a bad season, playing a massive 49 games for the club. And the last one would be Riyad Mahrez, signed on loan on deadline day by the looks of it last summer. Four goals in the Europa League, four in the Premier League, two in the FA Cup, an overall average rating of 7.24. Not too bad. And um, is, is he coming here? He's joining the club permanently as well at the end of this season. Uh, well, in a month's time. So we'll see how he gets on next season as well. In terms of players out, did Arsenal let anyone significant go? Callum Chambers, Granit Xhaka, David Luiz, Rob Holding, Meza Urza, they finally got out of the club. Who else is here? Emiliano Martinez, Kolasinac left on loan, Papa Sathopoulos, and Torreira left on loan as well. Pepe left on loan. There's been a lot of changes at Arsenal by the looks of it. 
So what we are going to do is skip ahead another year to the 31st of May 2022. We can see again what Arsenal do in the two transfer windows between then. See how they get on back in the Champions League, providing they get through their qualifier, and see how they do domestically in the Premier League and the Cup competitions as well. OK, we are back on the 31st of May 2022. This is the last season we're going to look at of how Arsenal have done without Aubameyang. Again, I have no idea how they've done. 150 inboxes, I should really get around to reading these. But let's have a little look together. Let's see how Arsenal have done in the competitions this season. As we can see there, it looks like they've got Champions League football again. We'll start off with the Premier League. I had a quick browse there. It doesn't look like anything good has happened. But we'll start off in the Premier League. Fourth position again. It's, it's typical Arsenal, isn't it? Fourth. Two points ahead of Spurs, three points ahead of United. There's a massive drop-off to seventh there. The top six seem to be pulling away from everyone else. The gap to the top of the league, though, has gone back to 20 points, so it doesn't look like Arsenal are going to be challenging to win the Premier League anytime soon. But if we have a look, the man is here again. Alex Lacazette, has, is this the same season as last season? It all looks so similar. Lacazette, the top goalscorer for Arsenal, with uh, his worst return we've seen, just 13 goals in the league. The highest average rating yet again, Gabriel Barbosa. Those two boys again seem to have been quite important in getting Arsenal back into the top four. OK, moving on to the Champions League. I can't quite believe what I'm seeing here. Runners up. Arsenal with the runners up. Alex Lacazette, five goals in the competition, their top scorer. Riyad Mahrez had a massive hand in helping them get there. A 7.79 .79 average rating and five assists over the tournament. Who did they lose to? Liverpool, of course. Of course, Liverpool. Liverpool, who have won the Champions League three times out of the last four seasons. But still, you've got to look at that as a massive win for Arsenal. We'll have a look at their, their path there. Can we have a look at their group? Which group were they in? Where are Arsenal? There we go. Group E. They were in a group with PSG, Lazio and Standard Liège. They came second in the group with 11 points. Who did they face in the, in the first knockout round? They beat Bayern Munich 4-2 on aggregate. In the quarterfinal, they knocked out Barcelona 5-2 on aggregate. Massive. In the semi-final, they, they beat Chelsea on penalties. What a game that would have been. And in the final, Liverpool were just one step too many. But saying that... A Champions League final at their first season back in the competition for what seems like forever. I mean, well done. Maybe Aubameyang isn't going to be missed after all if he leaves. Who knows? Who knows? Of course, because Arsenal won the FA Cup last season, they were in the Community Shield, which they got absolutely destroyed by Man City 4-0. But looking at the other two domestic cup competitions, it looks like Arsenal had some tough draws. Knocked out in the third round of the FA Cup by Manchester United. So not really much we can assess there. Lacazette, though, scored a goal. So well done to him. And in the Carabao Cup, knocked out in the semi-final by Man City. Barbosa again with the highest average rating there. So as a striker that's come in, he's been really good. The two seasons we've seen him, Gabriel Barbosa has contributed massively to Arsenal across every competition by the looks of it. But again, domestically, an Arsenal-esque season. Fourth in the Premier League, knocked out in the FA Cup by United, the Carabao Cup by City, Runners up in the Community Shield. Their saving grace this season, even though they lost, was the Champions League final appearance. In terms of transfers, let's have a look who Mikel, it must be Arteta still in charge, surely. Yes, they can't They can't get rid of him. Mikel Arteta done a fantastic job these first three years at Arsenal. Who did he bring in this summer to the club? As we can see here, 196 million spent. Mares permanently. Alfonso Davis joins the club. Romero Barro. Gabriel Henrique. Germán Pezzala. Steve, I thought that was Stephen Reid, Blackburn legend. For some reason, I thought he was still playing football. Blackburn legend might be a bit of a stretch. Stephen, Steve Reid, Steve Reid. It looks like they may have replaced Aubameyang in the first two seasons. So maybe Arteta didn't feel the need to continue to strengthen the attacking line this summer. Three goals in the Champions League, nine in the Premier League, none in the Carabao Cup. A total of 12 goals for the season with an average rating of 7.41, as we said. He's been okay but again, we've said it before, I feel like if you want someone to replace Aubameyang, they need to be scoring a lot more than this. They need to be playing a lot more than this for starters. Lacazette, on the other hand, seems to be contributing a little bit more as a goal scorer. Five goals in 10 appearances in the Champions League, 13 in 28 in the Premier League and one in one in the FA Cup. A total of 19 and an average rating of 7.18. Still, again, averaging just under a goal every other game. So his return has been quite consistent throughout. Should we have a look at Aubameyang? We'll have a quick look at Aubameyang, see how he's got on in, uh, in China. 
Oh, he's, he's not there anymore. He's at Atletico Madrid. We'll have a, have a quick browse at what he's done. His first season in China, 11 goals in 12 games, a 7.94 average rating. Very, very impressive. The second season, 17 in 25, an average rating of 7.4. Again, a very productive season. The third and final season, 11 goals in 13 games, an average rating of a massive 7.92. So Aubameyang in China was easy, easy, a breeze for him, a doddle. He's now at Atletico Madrid, and as you can see, his first full season in La Liga, they signed him for £11 million, 17 goals in 38 league appearances. He played in every single game for Atletico Madrid, five assists and six man of the matches with an average rating of 7.38. So since he's left Arsenal, he's gone to China, he's got his money, he's got his big pay packet, he's been productive there and scored goals, and now he's got a move to Atletico Madrid. And he's been productive there as well, so can we really complain? There it is then, the first sweet left foot simulation on the channel has been completed. Arsenal without Aubameyang, it's just very Arsenal, isn't it? Uh, a couple of fourth place finishes, a couple of domestic cups, a couple of finals. Um, very, very Arsenal, very Arsenal. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like. It was a lot of fun simming this and going through it and having a look at how Arsenal do. It's something that I definitely want to do more of in the future, so keep an eye out for more of those videos. And if you do want to see more of those videos, please subscribe to the channel. Also, a big thank you to the person that made this database for me and made this possible for me to do, Aberrant FC. I will leave all of his links to everything down in the description. Fantastic content creator, both on Twitch and on YouTube, so please go and check him out. It's been a pleasure. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Goodbye.